kicked off on his way. by four programmes to three, which, considering Rory hasn't got a question wrong all year, is a remarkable piece of cheating by us. With David and Jonathan this week is one of the world's top football and ice hockey commentators, who said recently that ice hockey isn't just football on skates. No, Barry, it's hockey on skates. <laughs> Barry Davis. With Gary and Rory, we were going to have Leicester midfielder Robbie Savage, but the club have refused to let Robbie take part because it might make Leicester City look bad, as if they could look any worse. <laughs> In his place, we have a comedian who's been described as the new Lenny Henry. Worryingly for Lenny, it was said by Dawn French. <laughs> Julia Simpson. <laughs> According to the Daily Express this week, the US forces are still combing Afghanistan for a mysterious bearded lunatic. Well, they're looking in the wrong place. <laughs> we start the week with the lies and damn lies of Sporting Bluff. Gary, Rory and Junior, your question concerns Britain's Winter Olympic heroine, Alex Coomba. Here she is winning her bronze medal in the Skeleton Bob in Utah. So here goes Alex Coomba for the last time. Round the final curve into the finish, the last chance for Alex Coomer, she's in first place, and that means Great Britain has a medal. Now, Britain has no training facilities for your skeleton Bob East, so what did Alex have to do instead, David's team? Alex Coomer trained on a fairground helter-skelter. Alternatively, Alex Coomer trained using a tea tray on a nearby main road. Well, Alex Coomer trained using a doormat on her stairs. What a great sport that is, isn't it? You just run three yards and then lie there. Mm. <laughs> you do that. Yeah. You, 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 did, you did do that, Gary, for Spurs. <laughs> Alex Cooper, I believe, is she's uh, in the armed. Is she in the air force? A flying officer. Oh really? Yeah. yeah RAF. I've been out with some girls who are RAF. Rough as. F <laughs> you were still lucky. <laughs> I didn't know she was in the area because that was the one thing I was going to go for because originally when I left school I was going to go into the Navy until I realised we spent a lot of time on boats and then uh, as a black person, you know, we don't like boats because the first time we got on one we didn't get home for 400 years. <laughs> I left that alone. <laughs> Before we go any further, can I just say how honoured I am, ladies and gentlemen, to be on a team with oh. an actual legend, Montgomery Burns from The Simpsons, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> God bless you, and I never knew you were real even. I love your work. Oh, Thank you for employing my husband. <laughs> You're in the Simpsons. You're not in the Simpsons. I'm not in the Simpsons. You're not part of the Simpsons. No, 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 no. We've got no Bart. We've got no Homer. Uh, we do have a Marge um, who sings Macy Gray songs all the time. She just sits in the corner and goes, Can't you try to say goodbye and I choke? Try and walk away and I stumble. <laughs> 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 I think it's a uh, chin right. tray. She probably had some sort of wheelie device underneath it, did she, like a skateboard? Right, so you think that David was telling the truth. Let's see if you're right. Never wrong wrong, boy. Never led to that happening. Never wrong wrong. Yes, Say Rory that. gets it right yet yeah. again. David had the correct answer. Alex Coomba trained on a road for the highly dangerous skeleton bob event using a tea tray with a skateboard wheels and the handles from a disabled toilet. Alex Coomba has brought a whole new meaning to the phrase, good on a skeleton. Previously, it was a reference to David Beckham's sex life. <laughs> David, Jonathan and Barry, your question is about our absentee guest, Robbie Savage, and his teammate at Leicester City, the cabbie's favourite, Dennis Wise. Leicester still pushing forward, trying to get back in the match. Davidson, Wise! That's his first goal for Leicester, Dennis Wise. And Robbie Savage wraps up the points. It's 4-2 to Leicester City. We'd like to know why Robbie and Dennis had a recent falling out, Gary's team. Robbie and Dennis had a row over a restaurant meal. 
Robbie and Dennis had a row over a teddy bear. Robbie and Dennis had a row over a book. Can I just uh, congratulate the researchers there for finding two Leicester City goals? Oh. Uh, oh. In colour, too. <laughs> Very good! Yeah. Robbie Savage, he was the guy who's meant to be on the show today. Yeah. And is it because Leicester's not doing well? Because I don't know much about football, but even I know they're going down faster than Rory at a petting zoo. So, presumably, <laughs> it's, is that why he's not here? Yeah. Before we get onto That's this, right. I'm excited having Barry on the show, because you're a real-life commentator, aren't you? Mm, sort of. But you're, you're yeah. going to do the World Cup? Are you going to do some of the World Cup? I am, That's yeah. exciting, isn't it? Very, yeah. Although I find it rather dull. Now, I'll tell you what I'd like you to do. <laughs> If you wouldn't mind, but liven it up for me. For people like me who aren't big football fans, mm. I'll give you 50 quid every time you use the words Kraut, Spick, Wop or Dago. <laughs> and if you can shout at some stage, Oi, Modson, I'm the daddy, that's a thousand pounds in my pocket. <laughs> I'll be watching for any of those phrases. <laughs> what do you mean? Are you doing anything in the summer? You want me to come and do some commentating? Absolutely. I'd say that'd be fantastic, wouldn't it? <laughs> commentating would be a totally different role in life if I had you as a summariser. Barry, let me come out and do the World well, Cup. Yeah, I'm a summariser. That's all right. He's never yeah, summarised well, anything in his life. <laughs> I think it's the, um, uh, the, the, the teddy bears. So you think Ooh, that Gary was telling the truth? Let's see if you're right. Gary told the truth, the falling out dates back to the club's Christmas party when Dennis hilariously presented Robbie with a Leicester-shirted teddy bear impaled on a sex toy and allegedly said to him, take this because you're the only prick in a Leicester shirt at the moment. <laughs> a bear and a vibrator. So that's what happened to Pudsey's eye. <laughs> in all their history, Leicester City have never won the FA Cup. The closest they've come to it is seeing Gary in silhouette. <laughs> And at the end of that round, David's team have three points and Gary's team have three points. <laughs> Time now to rack our brains as we try to figure out what's going on. David's team, we take you back to the opening ceremony of the Winter Olympics in Salt Lake City. So, what was that actually all about? Is that the sweet dream that Jonathan King has every night? <laughs> oh, f*** off then. <laughs> What'd you expect? Especially the sports next door. <laughs> <laughs> but Barry, the Winter Olympics, we do find it a bit tedious. What about during the skiing? What's the most important thing, do you think? Speed or caffeine to stay awake? <laughs> To be honest, though, the only reason we watch things like, you know, the slalom and all that, you know, the downhill ski skiing and whatever, is for the falls. We don't want to, we don't give a flying airborne and sexual encounter who actually wins. <laughs> we want to see a man fall down, broke him neck, right, <laughs> and is carried off by the ambulance. That's, oh, that's entertainment. You can, you can take the man out of Hackney, but you can't take Hackney out of the man. <laughs> Can we have a look at a clip of that again, of the it ice skating is, is folder again, yes. roll? <laughs> is this the controversial new West End musical, Ku Klux Klan on Ice? <laughs> that's, a, that's a scene from Don't Look Now, the musical. Yeah. <laughs> About you, you know what, we, what the yes, answer is. What's this, the answer? This is a, a young skater taking part in, the, in a sequence at the opening ceremony which set up the whole theme of the Games. He was the child of light and he was looking for what you find, the drop of a hat the fire within. Yep, it was as boring as that, three <laughs> points. <laughs> Other ludicrous and incomprehensible ceremonies recently included the Alberville Festival of the Senses, the Pyongyang World Cup Boat Song, and the Leicester City Player of the Year Award. <laughs> Gary's team, have a look at this. <laughs> Now, you'll recognise that unforgettable clash between Millwall Reserves and Bournemouth Reserves. Yeah. But what I thought I'd seen going all on? bored footballers standing around no crowd. I thought it was Gary's testimonial. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have a testimonial? I wasn't anywhere long enough. Well, surely the six-yard box could have given you one. <laughs> now, 
I know a lot of people have um, suggested that I cheat in this programme, and uh, this is rather embarrassing because um, that, uh, that match I was actually at, because there's a friend of mine who's... Um, <laughs> Reserves. Well, there's a friend You're of mine. You're the cameraman. No, there's a friend of mine. You see, that's what happens, you see. What happened was two footballers, I don't know their names, some footballer type names like Danny Thomas and Ryan Wolfenden, um, <laughs> banged into each other, I think, and they try and kick it back to the goalkeeper. And I think the guy who did it, who's now I can't remember, uh, Mark Hicks, I think it was, <laughs> uh, age uh, 28. <laughs> This kick went in the net, and the referee, uh, a difficult decision for Mark Horsley of Chertsey, uh, <laughs> um, had to let the goal stand, but I think uh, someone on the Millwall bench, Joe McLaughlin, uh, <laughs> instructed his team to let uh, the centre forward, who's got some sort of African name, uh, Amos Afoya, <laughs> score the goal. Something like that. Thank you, Jonathan Aitken. <laughs> It's totally correct, but, but rather than give you the three points, I think I'm going to minus three points from your team. And you we're going to give to. David's team 20 yeah, points. Gary didn't know I did. <laughs> well, here's what happened. After a Bournemouth player got injured, Millwall's Mark Hicks tried to pass the ball back to the Bournemouth keeper, but unfortunately the keeper wasn't looking and Hicks scored. So Millwall very sportingly allowed Bournemouth to equalise straight from the kicker <laughs> to even things up. Mark Hicks has now been put up for this year's FIFA Fair Play Award. Coincidentally, this comes ten years after Gary Lineker was awarded one. It was after Gary <laughs> sportingly crossed a naught off his Japanese paycheck. <laughs> <laughs> Millwall are nicknamed the Lions because of their pride, their courage, and because if you climb into the cage at the home end, you'll be torn limb from limb. <laughs> and so at the end of that round, Gary's team have no points, and David's team have 26. <laughs> So. Round three now, and it's time to have a look at some weird but wonderful goal celebrations. Gary's team, here's yours from third division mid-tablers, Exeter City. Long ball forward, Riddler's underneath it, oh he's missed it. Now here's a chance for Steve Flack, an acute angle, but a very cool finish. Well now what's he up to? What's he doing here? Well he's running towards his supporters. Well, whatever it is, the referee doesn't like it and he's booked him. But it's something to do with them being poor club, isn't it? Exeter, I presume. What do you think, boys? Very poor. Apparently the director of the box is cardboard. <laughs> <laughs> the nickname, Exeter, is the Grecians. The Grecians. Mm. What's a Grecian earn? <laughs> Not very much by the Thank you very it. much. <laughs> <laughs> that was always going to come out, that yeah, one. Yeah, that's it. Well, well, uh, Chapping hands of the crowd, crowd I would have For what particular reason? I don't know, I just need 20 odd points. <laughs> <laughs> Is this the lack of spirit that we've come to expect from the Britain's premier salesman of shoddy second rate potato based snack products? <laughs> <laughs> I think yes. I think yes. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> if we tell you now, you'll accuse us of cheating. So we've decided well, not, not to answer this question on the grounds that you tell us we're cheating anyway. OK, well, as the score is 26-0, I'll hand it across, OK? No, no, we don't, we don't want any more points. In fact, I'd like... This is the same David Gow who often said, we don't need any more runs. <laughs> Put back for lunch now. <laughs> the answer is that extra players weren't getting their wages. Here's Flacky himself to fill us in. We hadn't been paid by Exeter City Football Club, so I went cap in hand gesture to our supporters for a bit of loose change. Come on, Gary, you must have a spare bottle too. <laughs> Relax, Gary, it's right. Very joking. Exeter are now in such dire straits that everything hangs on this Saturday's result. Five numbers and a bonus ball, and they'll be okay. <laughs> David Seam is over to Spain for you. Here's Wunderkind, Jose Antonio Reyes, scoring a great goal for Sevilla against Valladolid. Here's Jose Antonio Reyes picking the ball up in the centre of the field. Oh, what a run from the teenager. Is anyone going to stop him? Reyes, it's 2-0 and that's a sensational goal. A magnificent goal. Oh, hang on, what's Francisco Ronaldo doing down there? <laughs> so... <laughs> what was going on there? <laughs> 
at 9.30 on a Friday night. <laughs> Nothing wrong with men biting each other's bollocks, is there? I didn't go to private school. <laughs> you show us footage of a man munching on another's <laughs> cock? <laughs> and you expect us not to leap at the chance with both feet? That's like giving David a bat and telling him to score. It's impossible. <laughs> it's like putting a dessert trolley in front of Rory and telling him not to eat everything. It cannot be done. <laughs> but anyway... <laughs> Can we see it again, please? <laughs> Barry, how would you commentate a scene like that? What would you say? Denied by the woodwork. No, I, I, I think I would have to borrow uh, a line from my esteemed colleague, Mr. Motson, at a cup final. I think what can't, drama yeah? here? <laughs> or maybe, ooh, he's blown it! <laughs> I think it's interesting, very interesting! <laughs> yes, I could have used that, I suppose. What's I mean, the world coming to? Look at that. Is, where, where's the romance gone, eh? <laughs> Stay down on him, no flowers, no <laughs> candles. <laughs> Well, we don't need the points. I mean, offer it across. What do we think? No, come on, have a guess, Captain. <laughs> it's pathetic. You're letting people down there with children watch you who might want to take up cricket as a hobby. Yeah, well, <laughs> they see you wimping out on them, they'll go that way. The root of evil. Football. Satan's soccer ball. Oi. Oh, he's awake again. You right. know it's a bad game. It's a great game. It encourages bad behaviour. It's a beautiful game. It encourages men to bite another man's penis. Exactly. <laughs> That's you why it's called the beautiful <laughs> game. <laughs> I think it's it's a literal... Um, oh, here we go. <laughs> I think there's, there's an old Spanish idiom which literally translated means, you know, I respect you, I kiss your cojones, you know, you know I, I worship your genitals and things. Is the correct answer. Oh. <laughs> so, we'll give you half a point for that. <laughs> Let's ask number one Spanish football pundit, Guillem Balaguer. In the last training session before the match, Gallardo, the eating man, told Reyes, the goal scorer, that if he scored the goal, he was going to eat his bollocks. That, in the south of Spain, it only means that he was going to congratulate him. Reyes never thought that actually that was what he was going to do. So it appears a charming Spanish colloquialism for <laughs> congratulations was taken all too seriously, which makes you wonder just how many men has Jordan congratulated over the years? <laughs> do you think that's what Cliff Witcher was singing about all those years ago? Congratulations! <laughs> Because he, he had a kind of desperate and needy look in his eye. At <laughs> and at the end of that round, Gary's team have half a point and David's team have 26. Oh. <laughs> Time now to blindly go where no man has gone before as we play field the sportsman. David and Jonathan, you're up first this week if you'd like to take your positions. Oh, and have 90 well. seconds to figure out who's at your fingertips. <laughs> Last week, when I enjoyed myself with the Lady Sumo, I'm going to strip for action. Oh. Oh. I'll tell you what, what's the, what's the current temperature? Any sign of a lady, I'm going to slip right in, like I do. <laughs> OK, Brian Falls on. Okay. Can we have our first mystery guest, please? Your time starts now. Wait, yeah. It's all sticky. Can I give you a hand, boys? Uh, someone stand up. No, you sit down! Are you sure? Sit down! Oh, I'll give a hand. I'm sit, a sit down! <laughs> sit <laughs> down! I'll tell you what. I think, I think that sumo left a finger here last week. <laughs> boys! Oh, well, well. It's Carly Malone! <laughs> oh, I don't know. I think it's... <laughs> You all right? Are you, are you down? Get off. That's my leg, you pervert. Is it Wobby Savage? Well, it's, Is it? I'll tell you what, though. Rims, this sorry. area needs attention. What's going on? Well, I am merely doing my job. I'm a doctor. I'm now going to take the temperature. This is a skater, and the hand behind you is probably a skater. Is it a lady speed skater? Speed, yes. Speed skater. The British champion speed skater. Sarah Lindsay! Oh, Thank you.
You'll be less than five minutes. Sit down. <laughs> okay, Gary and Rory, your turn. Blindfolds on once you get there. Okay, mate, yes. <laughs> I'll just pop over that mark on the That's floor. perfect. Hey, nice suit. Thank you. All it needs is the RSPCA to spray detergent over you. <laughs> and can we have our second mystery guest, please? Okay, and your time starts now. <laughs> oh, hang on. Is anybody here? Ah! Where are we Is going? Is that you? I don't know, there's something down Where here. Ah! Oh, oh hello. Oh. <laughs> oh, what's this? It's, <coughs> it's not Jonathan, is it? <laughs> hey, it's a woman on a tray. The room oh. service here is fantastic. <laughs> Yeah. What's it, up here? Um, it's not the plucky Queen Mother trying to get to Cheltenham, is it? God <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, bless her! Oh, look! Hey, she rolls. Hang on. Careful! I'll race you. <laughs> hey, Gary, have yes, idea. Quick. What? Show. <laughs> oh yes, it is. <laughs> Go on. Is this the young lady that was uh, I read in the Telegraph last week saying that next week she's going on to? They think it's all over. <laughs> <laughs> Alex, Alex Cooper. Cooper. Yeah. Correct answer. Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you what, she deserved more than a bronze medal for that. <laughs> OK, and at the end of that round, Gary's team have Bit three and a half, and David's team have 29. <laughs> we finish off the series by playing the name game. The team in the lead goes first, which is David's team. <laughs> Pass those along to Jonathan, please. Thank you very much. Pleasure. As many names as you can. OK, darling. Starting now. Uh, this was the, the thing we saw earlier, the little kid on skates going around, like Jonathan King's dream. Child of light. The child of light, God bless you. All right. He's a fool compared to the man sitting near me right now. Oh, An overpaid commentating fool wearing an out-of-fashion sheepskin coat, and you know it's true. <laughs> Boston. John Moss. OK, uh, we had one earlier, a big Nancy boy who was too scared to come on this show. Long blonde hair. Oh, like Goldilocks. Yeah. Yes. OK, um, all right. <laughs> The second name is what we saw the Italian doing to his friend earlier on. Sucking? No. Kissing. <laughs> well. <laughs> oh, he's he's very gentle, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. You have a certain sense like of romance, <laughs> don't you? Yeah, he's, he's, got, he's, got, yeah. he's a true romantic. He's got a much better idea of foreplay than you have, Grande. <laughs> <laughs> right. um, you know, like, yeah, but you I know, know you better. If you're eating your lunch in a hurry, you would... Your lunch. Bolt. And it might rhyme. It might oh. rhyme with lunch. Uh, munch? Yeah, there you go. And the first name, if, uh, if, if his um, lover uh, was born in Roman days, if Mr. Lawrenson was a Roman, he would not be called... Marcus. He would be called Marcus. Marcus Munch. OK. This is what I was doing half an hour before the show started. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to let the tension out somehow. <laughs> Ow! We were so near to winning. So we can get 48 to win. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know. OK, so you moved on to 33, so... <laughs> Beat that, Winneker. 30 and a half <laughs> will win it for you. We can do Actually, that. Actually, 30 will win it for you. Oh, you right. it and your time starts now. A little bloke, yeah, place for Leicester, beats up Dennis cab drivers. Wise. Yeah. First name, same name as a snooker player. Steve. Correct. Very easy, any snooker player he knows. Second name, it's actually an acronym for the German for pilot protection gun, which is Fliegerabwehrkanonen. <laughs> 
true. Black. Very good indeed. Uh, first name, it's the pet name for a kangaroo in Australia. Skippy. Joey. <laughs> Joey. Skippy, what that good show? Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll go <come> Skippy. <laughs> Second uh, surname, you, you have two of them, Gary, and you probably have two of them as well, uh, Junior. I've got some spare ones at home. <laughs> <laughs> and you sit on them. Cheeks. Cheers. Yes, yes, cheek. Cheeks. Joey Cheek, very good indeed. This is the guy who scored the win of a PSV against Leeds at the weekend. Oh, that's that long. Um, yeah, he, Jan Venegord uh, of Hasselink. Yeah, very good, that'll what do. What a cheat. Oh, he just happened to know the answer to the game. This is a Russian figure I'm skater. Her first name comes from the Greek for peace. Uh, <laughs> get out of my shop. <laughs> <laughs> that would be um, Irina, wouldn't it? Very good, Irina. So Gary's team have seven and a half, David's team have 33, which means that David's team are the winners, which means that the series score is four all, which in turn means it's tie break time. Now, in honour of our Winter Olympic medalists, we're going to ask Gary and David to race each other on the skeleton bob. That is, <clears throat> these two tea trays with skateboard wheels. <laughs> OK, we we'll pass that along to David, please. That's for Gary. We also have helmets and gloves no, for you. Like that. See, you know you want this. Time. <laughs> there you go. If you take positions up at the top of the ramps here, there's a start line for both of you. And we have a finish post here. Okay. Okay. Where do we put these on? Round the back? <laughs> 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 But they'll never go over my ears. <laughs> You'll be all right. Oh. Hello. <laughs> you must have heard this before. Don't take time putting your helmet on. You'll be back in a minute. <laughs> what do you do? You just have to sort of propel yourself using your hands and... Not and... carry it like that? No. <laughs> <laughs> Could so easily have been your other career. Do you have to hit the flag? No, you just have to touch it. Thank God for that. Like an English gentleman versus a hobbit. Look at him. <laughs> now, hold on, hold on. David, Gary's oh. lying down on his David, own. Get down side. on your side. Gary, this side, all right? Lie down already. Are you going to do a... It's up to him. Oh, all right. You can start however he wants. On your mark. Come on, Gary. Get set. Go! Go on, Gary. Well done, Gary's team. Oh, Unlucky. Not my fault. Not my fault. I gave you 33 points. What the f <laughs> Well done, Gary's team. Our thanks to David, Jonathan and Barry, well Gary, Rory and Junior. We're all off to Japan and Korea. Viewers in Scotland will get their own programmes. <laughs> my name's Nick Hancock. They think it's all over. It is now.